All right. Well, um, here's my first hand. I don't think this hand is keepable. I have only one play, Irresistible Prey, which could help me draw into a land, which then will help me play an overrun battlement, but like Ulamog isn't really good in this hand yet, so I can't play any of these three cards. I'm going to have to mulligan. This is better. So if I can get to turn seven, I can play my Ulamog, which could be a game winner. I, If I draw green, can stall out the board with these two guys, and if I, even if I draw another red, I can stall out the board a little bit with this guy. So very glad to be on the draw here. Um, making this a seven card hand makes it considerably le more likely to be good. And there you go. Look at that. This is a keepable hand for sure. So we'll see if I can maybe play my deck's uh, most famous card. See if I can get a limited Ulamog on the table. That will be fun. Even if he just corpse hatches it. I still get some value out of it with the... Uh, with the destroy target permanent. It's always fun. Well, that'll help. Alright. We're on the, the right path here. Uh, I believe I was going to mention I tr I cited in Traitorous Instinct over the Nima Siltlurker be for this exact reason, because it's removal against his Blood Throne Vampire, which seems pretty good. Again, I can't block because of that Virulent Swipe, so it's it's interesting how much of a sort of specter virulent swipe is over his deck it makes it hard for me to ever block that guy with with things I care about kinda nullifies my rage nimbus so for that reason I think I'm gonna play daggerback basilisk because I will block him with the daggerback basilisk I don't care if he has virulent swipe at that point that's a very good trade for me so <clears throat> hopefully he doesn't just last kiss it but you know, even if he does, holding the fort, okay, looks like he's not going to, I think that's pretty good value for me, he has to sacrifice the spawn token just to trade, <clears throat> Virulent Swipe does no good at all, I mean I guess he could just cast Virulent Swipe, but seems like more of a waste than doing that. But I'm okay with that trade. I know he's got Palaka Worms, and I don't want those coming out on turn 6. Or ever, for that matter. Hopefully I can smite one with my Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. Okay, he Cadaver imps it back. And replays it. He's got some good action there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <clears throat> So next turn I can play Scary Invasion and then Ulamog. So this is good. I'm very pleased with how this is going. I'll uh, look like I have maybe Spawning Breath. To block or not to block here is a question. I mean I know he's got the Viral and Swipe. I think I just block with the Blood Throne Vampire and let him use the Virulent Swipe on it. Because otherwise I block the Cadaver Imp, which is not just not going to be that big of a threat to me, I don't think. Sure. I mean, he's going to get in with it next turn, but he would have gotten in with the Blood Throne Vampire anyway, and that thing is just more dangerous. So there you have it. I think that was the right play. I could have kept that Rage Nimbus around a little bit, but I needed to get that Virulent Swipe out before I play my Ulamog. Hopefully he doesn't get enough to activate that too soon. Unfortunately, if he just drops a land and then a land, he can. So I almost hope he draws spells instead of land here, which is kind of funny. I think that's a carryover from the previous block where that was also the case often. Obviously in Zendikar with all the landfall, Oh, I cannot do that. Did I miscount? Two, three, four, five, six. I miscounted. Man. Okay. Well. 
two more turns. Oh, the Rage Nimbus. That's how I miscounted. Oh, that's terrible play. Do not block there. Oh, well. I really did have to get that Violent Swipe out before I, I dropped the Ulamog. But yeah, I shouldn't have blocked there. I really shouldn't have. Alright, I will block there. Can't afford to take too much damage here. Okay, unfortunately, his Wild Heart Invoker is basically big enough. To be a formidable force if he draws a land. And I cannot no longer destroy it because he has the spider umber on it. Suppose if he plays a Palaka Worm, that will be a good target. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I do not need all those guys. I will chump while I still can. Consume the Meek here would be pretty good for him, actually. I think I would play it if I were him. Okay. So. The question is, what do I destroy? He's indestructible. So I guess I gotta destroy the scary flyer. The Gloom Hunter. Well, there you go, the deck's namesake makes his first appearance. That's funny that I'm destroying a Gloom Hunter. I think it's right, though, because he's indestructible. So the flyers are what's going to get me. Bam! Ulamogged. Man, I wish I had had a um, Battle Rampart there. Annihilator 4 would have probably just destroyed him. Hopefully he doesn't draw a land, because he can pretty much kill me with two swings of Cadaver Imp. So yeah, that's key for him not to get a land there, otherwise I, I probably would have lost. Or would have been a lot closer. That doesn't really help him. Annihilator 4 is going to be disgustingly good here. Oh man, especially with a traitorous instinct. I think I gotta do it here. Traitorous instinct, this guy. Glad I sighted that in. Bam. Bam. 